When I look around now, everything seems like it's for sale. My favorite records are hundreds of dollars now because everybody wants them. The first pressing of the Black Flag or whatever records. So punk rock's for sale. Skateboarding is totally for sale. Lots of stuff with, I mean, bicycle culture's for sale. Everything has a price tag to it. You can identify so quickly and so easily and become, you know, put on the uniform and become that punk rocker, that skateboarder. But tall bikes isn't, it's never been totally embraced by a culture in that sense. It's pure, it's free still. It's, nobody knows what it is yet. It's still uncharted territory. Where did you get that? You know, <laughs> how much did that cost? <laughs> that sort of thing. It's like, we, we didn't buy it, we, we built it. And then it's a huge shock. It's like, how, how much can I buy one for? And it, how much will you charge if you want to build me one? And, and then that's a bit of a tricky conversation. It's <laughs> like, it's not the sort of thing you, you want people to spend money on, a, a lot of money on. It shouldn't cost a lot of money, but it, but it would cost a lot of money if you're gonna pay someone to build one. So there, there's, there's other ways to do it. It's fun to see the light bulb go off where someone realizes that it's not for sale and that they can't buy it. <laughs> what do you mean? You can't buy it. I can buy everything. Yeah. I, just, I just bought stuff last night on Amazon. That is really the revolutionary part of the tall bike. It's not part of the economy at all. You know, it has to be about getting together with other people, learning how to work with your hands, repurposing stuff and taking it out on the streets and share the experience with people. The same wonder that it gives people when they see my tall bike, they, they get when they see my house or they see whatever other thing I built or how I painted my car. It's like, oh wow, that's, that's exciting.